Good afternoon, Keto fam. Keto Kelly coming to you. Today is Wednesday, November the 6th. And today we are going to attempt to make fluffy chicks cook cornbread. After I make the cornbread, I'm going to make my homemade cornbread dressing with this cornbread. So, let's jump right into it. All right. Let me see. Maybe I could turn you guys around and just show you from the down angle. Hold on. All right, everybody. This is my little book that I've written down. Everybody's different recipes that I have in here. And right here I have the Keto Cornbread from Fluffy Chicks Cook. So, let's get started. In this bowl here, I am going to put, let's see, I need one third pork rinds. But again, I'm doubling this recipe, so I need two thirds pork rinds. One, two. All right, and I've also um, preheat my oven to 400 degrees and also let me show you this and since this has been sitting on my stove I have my small cast iron and in there I have just a little less than a teaspoon of bacon fat when I get ready to put this in the oven I'll just I'll put it in heat the it's still hot because I just cleaned it out but I'll put it in the oven heat this up and when this mixture is done I'll dump it in and throw it right back in the oven so all right, let's continue on. And I picked this up the other guy, the other day, you guys, at Walmart. I was hoping I'd have one of those that have the ch -ch 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 -ch, but they didn't have it. So, all right, continuing on, we need three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Now, I just grated this fresh Parmesan, so I need six tablespoons. And I'm ho let me break it up a little bit. I'm hoping I have six tablespoons here. Actually, that's uh, two tablespoons and a quarter of a cup. So let's do one, two, and then let's do a quarter of a cup. Let's see. Because there are four tablespoons and a quarter cup. So let's do this. There we go. Let's move this off to the side. Now these are all the dry ingredients. Now I need two tablespoons of whey protein. I'm gonna set that right there. Here's my whey protein. So I need four tablespoons. Actually, let's just do a quarter of a cup again. Quarter of a cup of whey. I need a half a teaspoon of baking powder. So I'll do one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon, baking powder, then it says pinch of salt, I got my sea salt here, so I'm going to do a couple pinches, one, two, and that'll do it for the dry ingredients, so let's get this all, all right, let's go, come on, get in here. empty okay let's set this aside now let's do our wet ingredients let's get that out of there two tablespoons of sour cream i want to double it so i'm going to do a quarter of a cup so let me get a spoon here quarter of a cup of sour cream oh got some on the counter there Quarter of a cup sour cream calls for one. Oh, I didn't get it all. Calls for one large egg. So I'm gonna do two. Sorry for the noise. Two large eggs. One. Two. Let's set this over here. An eighth of a teaspoon of the Amaretti corn extract. Here is the Amaretti corn extract. And let's see, that's one fourth of a teaspoon. That's one half. I could have swore I had an eighth, but one quarter of a teaspoon is equal to two eighths. So let's 
let's do one quarter. And then it calls for one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. What did I do with my teaspoon? I'm all, oh, here we go. So I need two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. There's one. There's two. And I use, I, I couldn't find the Brogs, Bragg's Brogs, so I ended up getting the White House, which is just as good. They've been around a long time, too. All right, so let's mix this. out of the way so you guys can see we're just gonna mix this up real good so in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and take my cast iron and I'm gonna put it in my oven let that get heated up now this says for 8 to 12 minutes and that's for I'm assuming two the two um separate ones so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put it in there for about 12 minutes and I'm just gonna keep an eye on it that looks mixed up pretty good so let's get our dry ingredients and let's combine them all righty for the best. I hope it doesn't taste too much like Parmesan cheese. That was a lot of Parmesan cheese. So let's, let's hope. I want to mash it up a little bit. I probably should have broke the cheese up a little bit more. So it feels like cornbread. Oh, you know what I want to do? Hold on. So I got the little packs of the pure. I'm just gonna put about a half of one of these. Let's actually see how much is in one of these packets. So let's see. Not even a half a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit in there, not the whole thing, so. All right. So while I'm waiting for the Cast iron to heat up, we'll jump into something. All right, now I have one rather large stalk of celery here. And I'm chewing on a little piece of it right now. Oh, and by the way, it is one o'clock, I believe. I'm gonna put it in my little food processor here. That was a half of a white onion, or yellow onion, I'm, I apologize. And we're gonna mince. There we go, minced up, you know, about as good as I want it. Now, in the meantime here, we can set this off to the side for right now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cast iron out of the oven. Heat it up pretty good. You wanna take a brush if you have, if you don't have a brush, you can just use um, a napkin and you want to coat your pan up the sides Ooh, that might have been too much bacon grease anyway all right let's take our mixture make sure we get it all there and hopefully you can see it in here oh yeah there's that infamous sizzle all right, that's what you want to hear, a sizzle. All right, back in the oven you go. I got it on the middle rack, 400 degrees. We're going to set the timer for 12 minutes. And then we'll stick a toothpick in it and check and see if it's done. So while that is cooking in the oven right now, we're going to go ahead and jump into what I do when I get prepared to make the cornbread dressing. Just a small frying pan. Now, if I was making a lot, I'd use a big frying pan. When I cook my turkey, 
I take all the drippings from the turkey out to make my gravy and to make my cornbread dressing, provided there's enough. If there is not enough, I usually buy like a turkey broth or some kind of broth that I can add to one or the other. It doesn't matter. Today, what I did is I... <laughs> Let me point you down. Today, I made a broth from the um, rotisserie chicken that I had, which to me is one of the most amazing broths. I took the bones... I added about five cups of water. I added two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. I added three bay leaves, a two teaspoons of poultry seasoning, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of um, pepper. I didn't add any salt because the bouillon has salt. So I've let that simmer for probably two and a half, three hours. I did have to add a little bit more um, raw uh, water to it to bring the broth up but you don't need a lot of seasoning especially if you're um, using a rotisserie chicken because the rotisserie chicken itself has really great seasoning so on my stove let me bring you over on my stove here I got my small frying pan and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna get probably one tablespoon of butter in there and I'm going to saute the pepper, oh, sorry, the celery and the onion in it. So hang on for that. Okay, I have a little less than a minute left on the oven, so I'm going to pull it out. Guys, I must say, it smells like cornbread. And it's rising, it looks like cornbread. I'm a little shocked, I must say. Uh, in my uh, frying pan here, I went ahead and added about a half a cup of the chicken stock or the bone broth to this and I've let it simmer down. I want to soften these veggies up um, when I get ready to mix it with the cornbread dressing. Uh, I may likely not use all of this. This was quite a bit for that little bit of cornbread. So I likely won't use all of that. I'll see when I get to it. I want to brown this up a little bit. I'm down to 14 seconds, you guys. I want to brown it up a little bit because I want it to stand up to the broth itself when I get ready to add the broth to it. So I may do it a little bit longer, even if it is done. I want to brown it really nicely. One, beep. All right. So let's pull it out. It looks amazing. I cannot, I cannot. Look at that. Here, let me set it down and show you all. Look at that. All right, I got my toothpicks right here. Let's give it a try right in the middle there. And it is done. But let me lift it up. I think I might want to go a little bit longer. Let's, all right, we might have issues getting this out of here. I'm going to break it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it comes apart on me here. Look at that. All right, I may just stick with that. All right, 12 minutes in my oven was long enough. So I'm going to let it sit. Oh, actually, this is what else I'm going to do. I have some melted butter right here. I'm just going to brush the top a little bit with the melted butter. That's what I do when I do my jiffy. So I'm just going to brush the top with some melted butter. You know what? I'm going to throw it back in for a couple more minutes. See if I can't brown up that top just a little bit more. 
Okay, it was in there for about two and a half more minutes. Uh, it did get a little bit browner, not much. I didn't want to leave it in too long because I didn't want the bottom to burn. So here it is, guys. I'm going to let this set and cool. And then I'll be back in to show you how we make the rest of it. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. What did I do with my little spatula? There it is. It's been 15 minutes. Let me get my cutting board. Let me pull it out of the pan. And we're gonna cut this. Not hot anymore. <laughs> I did, I turned my oven down to 350 degrees. That's the temperature I want it at when I get ready to do the actual cornbread dressing. So, let's cut it. Take it right down the middle here. I must say, I'm impressed. Look at that. Wow, nice crumb. All right. Now the taste test. Oh, it's nice and spongy too, which is exactly what I want. Let's give it a taste. It's okay. I think I needed to add a little bit more of the corn extract or do what Wes did. He added um, baby corn. Well, he had another recipe that he added the baby corn to. This does not taste exactly like cornbread. Not bad. But it does need more of the corn extract. So, in the meantime, let's get ready to mix this up. Now, let's take it and break it up into, you know, fairly decent sized pieces. In the bowl here it is quite spongy like cloud bread I didn't expect that so we're gonna break this up in the bowl can you hear that it has that spongy sound which is an awful texture thing for me from when I did cloud bread all right Let's hope the seasoning from the broth and the peppers, I keep wanting to say peppers, the celery and onion, give it a nice flavor. So let's do this. So you're going to want this fairly saturated. So, so far this is a cup and a half of the broth. I want that to soak that all up. I'm going to give this a taste with this on it. It's pretty good. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I'm going to add just a little bit more of this. And we're ready to it. I'm going to do a cap. See what happens. This is my trial run, you guys. For Thanksgiving. I know a few people suggested uh, a different one, so we'll see what happens with this. All right, now let me taste. Oh, yes. That's it. 
Okay, back to the cast iron. We're going to put it right back in the cast iron. If I can work my hand here. And we're going to bake it for about 20 minutes at 350. You know what? I think I might add a little bit more broth. So going on that, I'm guessing probably two cups. So let's add that right in there. And I want to brown the top of this. Let's get that all down in there nice, comfy, and so. All right, guys, back in the oven, about 20 minutes. I've just pulled it out of the oven. It took way longer than I expected. I actually ended up having to put the broiler on it to brown up the top a little bit. Two cups was too much. It's still quite juicy, so I would have stuck to maybe a cup in a quarter maybe not two cups two cups was too much in the meantime while that was cooking I took the rest of the broth and made a gravy got a nice little gravy here made with xanthan gum actually just let me keep you down right here here it is it looks good um we'll see how it tastes it is is did not absorb the juice as much as I would have liked it to. So we're going to take a little bit. Smells decent. And let's take a little bit of the, yeah, let me set this right here. Take a little bit of the gravy. And spoon some of the gravy over the top. I probably should have tasted it before I put the gravy on, but oh well. Looks legit, right? <laughs> All right, let me pull you back up. All right. Here's a taste test. Um, I am catching, this is hella hot. I am catching hints of the Parmesan cheese in it. Ooh, this is going to be too hot. Look at the steam coming off that. It's too spongy for me, you guys. I actually thought that would play to my advantage, but it's a little spongy for me. It's not a terrible flavor, but... It's good. Too salty. That might be from the, the gravy, but. It's okay. It's okay. It's not, <laughs> not what I expected. But. It's the sponginess that I'm trying to get past. And usually you get that sponginess from the egg. And I'm wondering, should I just use one egg versus two see what happens it's decent nice substitute but i think i'll probably end up trying a different one for thanksgiving mm. so give it a try you guys you may like it i'm okay with it it's not terrible but the hubby won't eat it. That's for sure. <sighs> okay, so that concludes today's video, you guys. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I, I do fresh green beans for Thanksgiving. I had two servings of the greens yesterday. Actually, I should add some greens to that and eat it. That would probably be pretty good. Um, and I went out on a limb. I went off page four and I ended up eating um, some cauliflower tots with some cheese and bacon and sour cream. And I'm up a pound today. I'm up. And I had two servings of greens 
and those cauliflower tots yesterday, and I'm up a pound. What do you do? Anyway. Okay, guys. Thanks for coming in and joining me today for this uh, video for cornbread, my cornbread dressing using Fluffy Chicks Cook. I will not put the recipe in the description. I will, however, do my best to link their page to uh, this recipe. I did it the other day, but I'll try it again today. Excuse me. And it's now 20 minutes to 2. And, I, and that's the first bite outside of that little piece of celery I had earlier. And I'm really not that hungry, but... Anyway, guys, thanks for coming in and joining me. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you want to see more videos, go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. And thanks again, you guys, for coming in and joining me. And I will see you in the next couple of days.